Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Ward. Um, I'm the C2 of the Service Provider Division at Cisco. Um, and I, although the title of the talk in the program was uh, Cisco's SDN Vision, I said I'm going to tailor this a bit to uh, the service provider uh, segment in particular and talk about um, not only my vision, but also Cisco's vision of, of SDN. You get this from me? There we go. OK. So uh, first and foremost, um, I want to start off by uh, agreeing with, with Axel Clauber in that SDN in most service provider spaces is really about um, adapting the architecture and augmenting the architecture of the internet to provide more services and features with SDN. Um, I think uh, the Google uh, approach of trying to rip and replace and see what we can do from a centralized uh, control point of view and using OpenFlow as an inner process communication is a very, very interesting, um, very interesting experiment. But nonetheless, most of the providers that uh, I certainly talk with are interested in augmenting the existing internet that's out there, and in particular, understanding how programmatic interfaces can enhance the services they deliver. Now, what's interesting about this is, and, and uh, Amin brought this up, is that at Cisco, and even myself, we had to get over the fact of some of the basic principles that we grew up with on building routers and building the internet and coming to terms with what OpenFlow and SDN was bringing to the internet. First and foremost, rule number one for the last 30 plus years has been that you must have coherency and consistency in the configuration of a device and what goes into the device. When the device is rebooted, it will come back in the exact same state. And this is very deep-seated religion for, for those who build routers that the way it was is the way it must be when it comes back. And the second piece, which has been around the internet for even longer, is what Amin talked about with distributed control. Independent routers making independent distributed decisions of the topologic shape of the internet and the connectivity of, of their adjacencies and of the rest of the autonomous systems in the internet. That one is an incredibly deep-seated religion. And What's interesting, and Amin, Amin brought this up very, very clearly, which is that there's some things you can only do with a centralized view. And the way that I certainly have been coming to grips with these two fundamental facts of the way that I've been building routers for a very long time is realizing that, in fact, we've also been building the internet with a centralized control for a very long period of time. And that is actually in, in the place primarily of the transport network. And what, what is now being brought to, say, IPMPLS or services is the fact that if you have both a distributed view which can enhance and enable resiliency in that network, and you can have a centralized view such that you can optimize where to place bandwidth, and you can understand a multi-level view of the internet, you can do quite a bit more. So let's talk about that for a second. Simplifying down to the way I'm currently viewing SDN and what we're working on at Cisco is effectively shown in this very simple diagram. The network itself holds all the state for all the individuals connected to the network, the services they're running, the applications they're running. And what's interesting, and we've discussed this over the last day and a half, is that the big data that comes out of the network is really the key part that the internet hasn't realized yet. There's more data held in the network about what's going on, obviously, than anywhere else. And so towards that end, that big data piece of the internet is really the generation of that data to analytics engines. Just back, back to the basics of information theory, analytics engines turn that information and raw statistics into knowledge that then we can use to build new policies. And policies at the most generic sense, really what I'm trying to describe, is the experience you're going to get on the internet. It can be a security experience. It can be watching HD versus SD. It can be a number of things. But coming out of that analytics engine is that orchestration mechanism to create the policies you want, and it's the program interfaces we've been talking about to push it back into the internet. And it's really these three things working in concert that's critical to understand the feedback loop of the state of the network and, experience, and what you want out of the network and the applications used in the network needs to tie itself all the way back together. That feedback loop, which was interesting, um, is widely deployed on the internet today. 
We just aren't, we're just using it with different protocols. We've got IP data records, and we're programming new QoS policies and CMTSs. We've got LTE gateways and 3G gateways, which are taking a look at the applications that you're, that you're currently running and tuning the network in a feedback loop there. There's a number of cases in multiple network functions and multiple segments in which this programmatic feed, feedback loop is currently operating. And what's critical and what ends up happening when you begin to take a look at that vision of, of how the network is working together, you understand that you need to begin to segment the use cases and the, and the experiments and the designs and the purpose for adding programmatic interfaces into the network into roughly two large categories that you see on either side here. We've talked a lot about optimizing the network. And opti optimizing the network can be ease of operation, flexibility and agility of placing those services, finding unused bandwidth that's, or unused capacity in your network and placing bandwidth there. That, those, all those fit into the optim optimization category. In the monetization category is the ability to spin up new services quickly, the ability to take services that currently exist, whether they're NATs or firewalls or DPIs or parental control and, or content caches, and be able to virtualize these rapidly as a part of the network service and have them part as the overall routing system. And we begin to segment into these two different categories, we at least then begin to talk about which problem we're trying to solve. And so towards this end, if you begin to get wrapped around the axle of, wait, the router's gonna reboot in another state, then whether you configured it, and you can get over that. And you can get over that because you realize you actually have been doing this as well with RADIUS and COPS and PCMM and a number of other provisioning protocols. And you can get over the centralized view issue because you realize now this is how you find unused capacity. You can begin to discuss exactly what you're trying to accomplish on the network. And that really becomes the key. Because it's that intelligence in the network that application developers need to receive to build better applications. And these things, the applications we're talking about can be fairly simple to understand, although we haven't discussed them over the last day and a half, of whether or not we have a financial trading algorithm that needs to find the lowest latency path. This is an excellent way to, again, use that intelligence of the network and query the network to get it back out. Another one is, of course, to use WebRTC or real-time communications in HTML5 and build the networking hooks directly into that such that we can deliver HD video, set the QoS, set the path, et cetera, and continue forward. So it's the extraction of information and the full duplex programming of that state and this three uh, different functions as they interact that becomes key to really understanding how SDN can be useful. Now over the last day and a half, I've heard umpteen times that the whole point of SDN is to separate the control and forwarding plane. And I posit that this is fundamentally limited. Martine yesterday said the third big plane is the fabric. And that might be in the case in the data center, and we can debate that in another conversation about data centers, but in, in service provider, actually I think there's a number of missing planes. We've got the transport plane that was just alluded to for the first, first time in this, in this panel today. And the ability to program and affect the transport paths and then the forwarding paths, the control of where we want to place traffic, services, and manageability. All these planes working together are really what's exposing all of the power of SDN in the service provider uh, arena. And in particular, what's critical to understand is that each and every action that you want to do or perform in that provider network may be working at different planes. SDN is not an all or nothing operation. It is not all features at one time. It needs to be seen as a modular workflow approach to programming state into the network at different planes and harvesting that network intelligence out back into application space to build better applications. The pieces for optimization really come down to, again, sharing the topology, attributes of the topology, and extracting this out of the network as it exists. Michael alluded to this earlier, getting the topology out of the network today actually isn't possible by the protocol that we've been discussing, OpenFlow. We also uh, discussed with, with Axel and Amin that getting this topology out of the network is something that we need to find a way to perform this, and in fact, this is, uh, this is being done using traditional routing protocols because you're getting real-time information about the topology through those particular protocols and expose those up to applications and allow programmatic state to come back down to deliver these agile services. 
So a couple examples, and uh, we've seen a number of these use cases, in particular about trying to get content across a interdomain boundary where there's an application request across that interdomain boundary. We need to adapt those resources in that peering link potentially to set, just like you do in SIP phone calls, at the trunking link to set the amount of content that can traverse that link. And then we can actually have, just like you do in voice phone calls, you can actually monetize that particular service across that interdomain boundary. But you can do this in a programmatic way in which you're dilating bandwidth between these, setting a call admission control. These are all part of the SDN universe. The next one that's, that's been discussed, and again, back to the topologic theme, is that we want a notion of a network weather report. And in particular, because we're trying to deliver application space or applications to a particular business user, and what you want to find out is what is the utilization of the network. Amit said it very, very clearly today. At one particular point in the network, you can't understand the utilization of, of the entire topology. Thankfully, this is being added to the protocols uh, of ISIS and OSPF and BGP that we now can, and we can see more attributes. But a centralized view is the perfect place to see the entire topology versus one link. You do need a combination of distributed protocols for real-time resiliency and a centralized view to be able to understand the weather report of the internet. And in this particular case, by monitoring that weather report, you can actually maintain the service level agreement between the application user uh, and the, or sorry, the application, the business users, user via that service provider by continuously monitoring. And the user can monitor it as well as the provider can monitor it. And we, and we can do this through that centralized view. Now, I'm going to go all the way back to uh, the original part of my talk where when we take a look at the end-to-end -end view of SDNs, what you see is that there's, we have to have the notion of the clients that are going to be performing these particular actions on the network the access technologies and the telemetry that we want to get out of the subscriber and the identity of the subscriber, how this is going to affect where they actually connect to the network, which are the programmatic points of a service provider network, the wireless gateways, the wireless access points, the BNGs, the CMTSs, the provider edge routers, the data center WAN routers, the secure VPN gateways. These are all points in the provider network that allow us to get state and harvest that intelligence and do something with it via analytics and provide new policy. And second, these are the points where we're going to program those new features directly into the network using SDN technology. And so it's all of these pieces that come together that are key. Now, additionally, um, we've talked a lot about centralized and single controller views of, of how to program a network. What we know in provider networks today, and what Axel mentioned as well, is that there are multiple orchestration layers. There's orchestration for content. There's orchestration for security profiles. There's con there's um, other profiles, obviously, for wireline and wireless subscriber termination, VPN gateways, et cetera, et cetera. What we want to be able to do is get beyond and break the shackles of our current provisioning protocols to enable multifaceted applications to be able to build the policy and the experience that we have on the internet. Let me boil this down to reality for a second. That sounded pretty lofty. What I'm trying to say is that today when your DSL connection terminates, it's on a BNG. That policy is being programmed via RADIUS. RADIUS is the same, same protocol that, that configured your policy or programmed your policy when you used dial-up 20 years ago. We have an opportunity to unshackle ourselves from some of these provisioning protocols if we use SDN technology and realize that we can have multiple producers into that policy to deliver the experience we want on the net. So this is not only just software-defined networking, but this is also enabling, basically and critically, new business models to emerge in the service provider market such that they aren't just big, dumb pipes, but they can deliver new services via these new protocols and these new interfaces and providing, provided via full duplex communication with the network. There you go.